surrender to a two-bit consulting detective? I'm afraid you'll have to. <laughs> Please. The gun is empty. <laughs> I empty only the first chamber. How else to catch a master criminal? <laughs> no! Don't host! do it! It's three <laughs> stories! <laughs> very good, very good, Mr. Holmes. How do you do, Counselinski? Come, we got the letter from the dead body, ha! Huh? The letters are not on the body. I secured them this morning. Excellent. Please hand them over. I'm afraid I can't do that. But why not? Because they compromise a young lady who deserves better. A young lady who made one small mistake, but will not, I promise you, pay for it for the rest of her life. But Mr. Holmes, the prince will be furious. He will 
ruin your reputation. <coughs> we will have my help. Now, I don't want to see you ever again. This is not over. <laughs> Wait, then you did promise to give him the letters. Yes. And now that you see me in my true light, we have nothing left to say but goodbye. My supposed friendship for you was a pretense, a sham. I don't believe you. Why not? From the way you speak, from the way you look. You're not the only one that can tell things from small details. Kiss me, kiss me, and then tell me you don't love me. I, uh, oh. huh? Damn that Spanish flu. <laughs> <laughs> of our play about a man of reason who loses his heart and stands up for the one fixed star in his firmament, the cause of justice. <laughs> <laughs> As many of you know, I wrote this play some 15 years ago with the blessing of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle in order to keep his greatest creation, Mr. Sherlock Holmes, alive and well on the stages of the world. Any success we have attained, I attribute entirely to Sir Arthur, though I am more than happy to bask in his reflected glory. <laughs> <laughs> this was our final performance in New York City, but I hope you'll come see us again on tour, which will begin right after Christmas and just... Wait, don't anyone move! That man has a gun! No, I'm not joking! He could be... What? No! <laughs> 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 Please, please don't start on Winnie's soliloquies. I am rudely stamped, and one loves majesty to strut before a wanton ambling nymph. Winnie, this is not the time. There are people waiting at the door. And that's so lamely and unfashionable that dogs bark at me as I hope Winnie, I am. Winnie, will you stop it and get the door? I can't go to the door of my bathroom, Mother. I am not eccentric. You're a big help! <laughs> I'm coming! It's like living in a madhouse while the gatekeeper is on holiday. Hello, who is it? Simon. And Aggie. And oh my gosh, is there a speaker on the door or something? Yes, dear, it's called the speaker phone, and it's one of Willie's hair-brained ideas. 
This is Gillette. Hello, Aggie. How nice to meet you, dear. This is amazing. It's like Flash Gordon or something. <laughs> I'm in the drawing room, but I'm still getting dressed. You're getting dressed in the drawing room? Does that have a window so I can watch? Oh, stop it, you terrible boy. The door seems to be unlocked. Shall we come straight in? Yes, please. Leave your coats in the foyer and bring the delinquent with you. Holy smoke. This is where God would live if he could afford it. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Gillette. Aggie, these are after all this time. I can't believe we haven't met before. Neither can I. I've heard all about you from Lily, of course. He simply raves about you. Well, he is wonderful. Oh, gosh, got it. You finished dressing. Oh, stop it, you terrible boy. Get over here. Marry me now before the baby arrives. <laughs> I've known this young man since he was an extra in Pride and Prejudice. I played Mrs. Bennett. I wish I'd seen it. it was, I pretended I was a little ducky and not felt there, you know. It was quite a stretch. I could be quiet. Did you make me a Christmas present? I love your presents. Last year, she made me her famous peach preserves. I was doubled over with joy for three days. This is for you. Merry Christmas. Oh, thank you. It looks beautiful. This house is amazing. It must have cost the earth. Oh, you know, really, it's never by halves. When did you move in? Uh, about three months ago now. How is he feeling? Well, he scared me to death getting shocked like that. And now he insists he's going to catch the culprit all by himself. I say to you, Witty, you are not a policeman. But he locks himself up for hours in his laboratory. You have a laboratory? My dear, this house has everything. Watch this. Oh my god! There are buttons to patrol it all over the house. It's one of his favorites. <coughs> Along with the miniature railroad, the electric snow shovel, and the exploding monkey. <laughs> oh, that would be magic for you. I'll be right back. Huh. What? Are you holding up all right? I think so. You'll be fine with it. Trust me. Oh, right. Good sport. Are you sure? Absolutely. I want to see their faces when we give them the news. They'll say, what? What? Greetings and salutations. What kind of friend is this? It is a very lady. Oh, my brother, he is in Elysium. Perchance he is not drowned. What think you, Sailor? Perchance that you yourself were saved. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Here's to the rebels. They shall be non-stop and very drunken. Do you know, I've been on vacation a mere two weeks and already I missed you terribly. Thank you, Felix! Not you, you idiot! Aggie, I've been in love with her since... Oops, there's my wife. Keep talking, darling. It will sound so wonderful when it's repeated in court. <laughs> How was your time off? Luxurious. We went to a spa. Felix hated it. There was nothing to eat or drink, and they had us do some bizarre Buddhist exercise. It's called yoga. I thought that was the white pudding stuff. That was yogurt. <laughs> it was like spoiled milk with the texture of bone marrow. <laughs> I can't get over this place, can you? He said it was something, but I had no idea. Why would he build a castle on the Connecticut River? Why would you let do anything? The man is insane. I thought he was your best friend. And I repeat, the man is insane. He built an awfully nice house, though. It would be excellent for a murder. But why a murder? It's isolated. There are loads of rooms for hiding the body. And it's on a river, so you can drown people. <laughs> what more do you want, Max? He has two. Three. As well as two broad swords, a garage, and a brace of pistols. If Connecticut is ever attacked by Rhode Island, this house will be the first line of defense. <laughs> the snow fell gently upon a little stable, and there in front of it was a manger made of wood. In the manger was a boy child. And his name was Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> May I stare? And hey, Eddie. How's your arm? Are you in much pain? Oh, it's much better now. Thank you for asking. Simon, how are you? It's good to see you, sir. I see you've all arrived safely, despite wind and weather. It's getting pretty dicey out there. Blow winds, eh? And crack your cheeks. Spout till you have drenched our steeples. Drown the cocks. But even then, the morning cock grew loud. And the sound is shrunk in haste away. The knave turns fool that comes away. Where's my fool? Oh, I think the world's asleep. To sleep, a chance to dream. To sleep, no more. Halt, you repeated sleep. Game, set, and match to Felix. Oh my God, I love you. Of course you do. Felix, 
Chris, you scoundrel. Were you making fun of me down here? What? I do have the proof. Why would he build a castle on the Connecticut River? Why does Gillette do anything? The man is insane. I thought he was your best friend. And I repeat, the man is insane. What in God's name was that? <laughs> My latest goodie. Microphones here and there, and I can turn them on and off at all the light switches. You're amazing. How do you play it back? It's called a remote control. Ah. First presented in 1903 to the Paris Academy of Science and under development ever since. It sends signals through the air without wires. The military is starting to use them. They really are amazing. <laughs> Hello, my darlings. I brought some bubbly so we can really celebrate. Now you're talking. Here, let me help. That looks awfully heavy. You darling boy. He always looks after me, unlike some children I know who will remain unnamed. An ill-favored thing, sir, but mine own. Oh, stop laughing, Wendy. He can be so irritating, especially since he got shot. He's so proud of it. <laughs> By the way, where's Barnes? I can't find him anywhere. Who's Barnes? He's our butler. Can you imagine if we have a butler? I gave him the night off. What? He looks tired, and we're all family, really. Oh, Willie, really? how could you? With your bad arm, you can't even help me. Oh, of course I can. Look, I, I've been meaning to do this for two days. Here, frame it. We'll call it a farewell to arms. <laughs> nice. I suppose there's been no progress in finding the man who shot you. Well, the police are stuck, but I believe I've found something. Oh, the jail. Really? You remember the note that was left at the stage door on the day of the shooting? The stage door. I do. Old Nazi said the envelope was addressed to you, but the note inside was blank. Exactly. And the police lost interest in it. But I've been subjecting it to some tests upstairs in my laboratory. And in the end, it was a matter of trial and error. Take a look. Willie, be careful. It took a few tries, but I mixed a little sodium carbonate in with the alcohol. So in the end, it's not just the heat that's doing it, but also the chemical. My gosh! Look! Dear Mr. Holmes, bang, you're dead. Uh -huh. Then they were trying to kill you. Wait, there's more. Look. <laughs> HBIII135. It's like a cipher. Maybe it's a German code. I mean, with Hitler and all. Uh, possibly. <laughs> on the other hand, Aggie, could you hand me the Shakespeare on the mantle, please? See, most people don't realize, but when Sherlock Holmes says, the game's afoot in the adventure of the Abbey Grange, he is in fact quoting Shakespeare. Let's play. H-V-I-I-I. -I -I. Henry VIII. That's a wonderful guess, Simon, but it's wrong. Henry V. Oh, of course. Once more into the breach, dear friends, once more, or close the wall up with our English dead. I see you stand like greyhounds in the slip, straining upon the start. The game's afoot! So HB is Henry V. And III135 is... Act 3, C1, line 35. That's a marking. The game's afoot. Wow. This was left for you at the stage door. That's rather creepy. But what does it mean? It means whoever tried to kill you is seriously crazy. There's something more, isn't there? Let me see that. <clears throat> There's a watermark. What's a watermark? An impression pressed into the paper when it's manufactured. A sort of advertisement. Hotels use it in businesses. Oh, Christ. What? Where's it from? The Palace Theater. Oh, no. I'm not following this. It means whoever wrote this had access to the theater's stationery. It means they worked at our theater. It could have been someone from the stage crew. Or a producer. Or an actor. Well, you certainly made it a jolly Christmas, Willie. Oh, stop it. We shouldn't jump to conclusions. Someone could have swiped the paper, in which case no one here is involved at all. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Merry Christmas. 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 Cheers. Uh, while we have the glasses out and are feeling jolly and all, I'd uh, like to make an announcement, if I may. Go on. <clears throat> well, Aggie and I are married. What? What? You mean engaged? No, married for four weeks. Look, you told me nothing. No. My son tells me nothing at all. <laughs> we were going to tell you after the run, but then the shooting happened. Oh, and it's marvelous. Isn't it wonderful, dear? Uh, yes. Yes, of course it is. Absolutely. 
And you are so uh, brave to get married again after what happened the last time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, what she is. I mean, her husband died on their honeymoon, <coughs> didn't he? That's what I heard. Well, for heaven's sake. <laughs> yes, he did die, Mrs. Gillette, and I don't mind talking about it. In fact, talking about it makes it more bearable. There, are you satisfied? <laughs> now. <laughs> Go on. Tell us what happened. I want to know everything. Oh, well, there isn't much to say. Uh, Hugo, that was my husband. We were married just over a year ago. We went to Killington in Vermont to ski for a honeymoon. Did you really? Come on, here. It's very expensive. Now, her husband was quite well off. That's what I heard. I heard he was loaded. <laughs> One of the richest men oh, in the entire it. country. Thank you, Mom. Oh, really, stop it. I hate it when people beat around the bush. It's like you were Penelope. You were married. She died. You miss her. And there's an end to it, and it makes you feel better when we talk about it, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Right, come on, my dears, spill the beans. Well, my husband was an excellent skier, but he decided to try the Black Diamond Slope, which is the most dangerous at the resort. He got all dressed in his jacket and goggles, and the, the attendant tightened his gloves and boots, and Hugo set off down the hill as happy as I'd ever seen him. And then, yes. the strap on his boot just broke as he was coming down a hill. And his ski sort of came apart or something, and he, he lost control of the iciest part of the slope, and he, he hit a tree and <laughs> died instantly. Oh, no. I must have been a shock at first, because I just tried to talk to people and pretend that things were manageable, but by the end of the first night, I was shaking so hard I couldn't stop. And you were all alone. Well, not for long. She had good sense to wire me that night. We did best friends for ages, and I was a show in New York at the time. And he got everything and arrived the next day. He was a great comfort. And the rest is history. How romantic. You're going to look goofy in a similar way. Oh, don't you start. Martha's right. You have to face up to life. No matter what the world throws at you, no matter how difficult it can get sometimes, you just have to say to hell with the bastards and go on living. <laughs> oh, that's my girl. Hey, let's turn things up with a little music, shall we? Here, here. To the happy couple. The happy, happy, happy couple. couple. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else? Who is it? Yes. Oh, Lizzie. Is she in the show? Not in the show, but in show business. Do we know her? We well, certainly know of her. Oh, I smell trouble. Wendy, will you stop being coy? My God, you could drive St. Joan to drink. <laughs> Just tell us who it is. It's Daria Chase. What? William, oh. <laughs> what you? She's awful. She's worse than that. I met her at a party once, and she completely snubbed me. She gave me the worst review of my life. It was a costume drama with uh, Joan Crawford, no less. She said the radiant Miss Crawford came on to the tripping of heels, followed by a lump of roast beef. <laughs> she said I played Hamlet's mother, looking like a worried pastor. <laughs> I was in a show and wore a bathing suit. She wrote, Simon Bright's audacity in the role is largely in excess of his equipment. <laughs> well, clever at least. She's a spiteful, gossip mongering, heron and bitch, and you will know for a solid explanation. <laughs> yes. 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 Let him know. Well, all right, fine. She's writing a profile of me for Vanity Fair, and she asked to come to one of our weekends. Now, like it or not, Daria Chase is the most influential columnist in the country. Her profile of me will give us more free publicity than if I shot Lincoln. So I suggest that as a courtesy to me, that you are at least civil to Miss Chase, and that you get off your panties and go down and greet her at the dock. <coughs> Thank you. Exit ungrateful guest shuffling feet. <laughs> You're up to something, aren't you? You 
didn't tell me. I couldn't. I didn't have the courage. Courage? I didn't want you to think less of me. Well, Simon's a fine fellow. He's more than that. Well, what I mean is... I know what you mean. He's ordinary, he's nice, he's easy to please. Well, he is those things. And he's in love with me. Are you in love with him? Of course I am. I wouldn't have married him otherwise. And he's very, very kind. When I needed him, he was there for me in an instant. Of course he was. But I was in love with you. You <clears throat> never asked me. I gave you every chance. I, <laughs> I offered you everything. I know you did. And I was too foolish to take you up on it. I had some misguided notion that I was being loyal to my wife's memory. It's been ten years since your wife died. Oh, yes, I know. Oh, William. Look, Andy, you're going to be fine. The best man won, I'm sure of it. And for heaven's sake, look at me. I'm, I'm old enough to be your slightly older brother. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a million. It's just, I mean, I thought that you felt something. You treat everything as a joke. Even that horrible attempt on your life. Not as a joke, my dear, but as a game, which is a different thing entirely. Look, we've chosen this mad life of ours, and we'd be insane not to accept it for what it is. Do I go to an office? No. Do I wear a tie to work? No. We're actors. We wear silly costumes. We put on noses made of putty, for God's sake. We don't want to be grown-ups. We're all Peter Pants, and a good thing it is, too. I don't want to leave all the fun behind just because I've reached some magical age of regret. That's what they want us to do, you know, all those grave, faceless accountants, and I won't do it. I won't. I don't treat life as a joke. I treat it as the most glorious game ever invented. Love and heartbreak, game. Life and death, the greatest game, the biggest adventure. Shakespeare got it right on the nose. Henry V, charging into battle against overwhelming odds. And what does he cry? It's all a game! And if I die, I die! So let them praise me, hate me, or shoot at me. At the end of the battle, I will have won, even for a moment. Now, if you think you need Simon in order to live like that, then take him, by all means. Cling to him. Don't hesitate for a second. I will, however, miss you, unutterably. Gillette! Guess who's here? It's our old friend, Daria Chase. <laughs> 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 oh, Merry Christmas! Oh, William, my dear, sweet, vulnerable man, how is your arm, your heart, your soul? Oh, after that ghastly shooting, I thought I'd never see you again. That or I find you limping like a broken line to the final watering hole. And here I am, right as rain and twice as healthy. Daria, you look magnificent. Oh, please. I simply grabbed whatever was hanging in my sad little closet as I bounded out of New York City for the countryside on Christmas Eve. And, oh my god, just smell the air out here. <laughs> mm. Mm. I haven't smelled air like this since I was a little girl growing up in Kansas or wherever it was with all those divine little cows and things. How lucky you are to have all this nature to comfort you. Just like that famous painting in the grass, but with our clothes on. Oh, Felix, my dear, how are you? Not as well as you, obviously. <laughs> oh, stop it. My beauty is superficial, and yours is on the inside. My God, we go back a ways, don't we? I remember when I first came to New York as a youngster, how I looked up to you with all your years of experience. And yet my friends and I called you mother. No, no, stop it. That's impossible. You didn't have any friends. I had Felix. And didn't everyone. Oh, oh my God. Sorry, Em. Let me introduce the rest of the clan. This is my mother, Martha Gillette. We've met before, very briefly, at a party, but I do read your column. In fact, I keep it right next to my bed in case I can't get to sleep at night. <laughs> what a witty thing to say, and so unexpected. Hello, Daria. It's nice to see you. Simon, my dear, you're looking very well. As do you. I didn't know you. Of course we do. We met at Killington at the big weekend. I was there for the skiing and those divine parties. <laughs> then 
after I left. Your husband had that ghastly accident, didn't he? Oh, I was so upset. If I had stayed, I would have had one of the biggest scoops of the whole year. <laughs> For you, it must have been quite upsetting. I bet you don't know they're married now. For four weeks? Four weeks, two days, and six hours. I'm especially proud of the six hours, as it shows I can really stick with it. <laughs> the truth is, I do know about it, and I plan to put it in my column on Monday morning. <laughs> I mean, just look at the two of you. Your headline news. One minute you're character actors, the next minute you've inherited half of the Pacific Northwest. What? <laughs> what do you mean? Which are. Darling, <laughs> you just married the mayor and widow of Manhattan, for God's sake. I'm sorry, but you got that wrong. You go left for nothing. Excuse me, but I am a reporter. When I'm on the records on your marriage, I happen to see Hugo's will and testament. He left you everything, didn't he? All his millions? Yes, he did. Oh, Why didn't you tell us? I don't know. I didn't like to affect my relationship with anyone. They would treat me differently. You know they would. Does that mean I'm rich? Very rich. Ah! I am rich, I am rich, I am rich! How do you do? I am rich, you may touch me. You just made my day! I must say, this cast of yours gives me endless things to write about. It's like I invented you just for the purpose. We'd rather you wrote about the play and not us. Oh, nonsense. Of course you wouldn't. Everyone wants publicity. It's magic and it's changing the world. Look at me. I'm a sorceress. A wave of the pen and I can make you a star. Poof! <laughs> publicity equals fame equals money. It's like a drug, but it never stops. <laughs> and I must say, you've all been hogging the limelight beautifully, haven't you? First, the shooting, which in itself must have doubled my readership. Then the inheritance, and now the murder. Murder? What murder? You mean the shooting? No, I mean the murder this morning. Don't tell me you don't. Do you know about it? I'm afraid I do. I was going to tell everyone after dinner. Oops. Who was murdered? Nods. Oh. Stage doorman nods. I'm afraid so. Oh no. The police asked me to identify the body this morning. It happened late last night, apparently. I was there. Excuse me? At your theater last night. Not at the murder, of course. But there's no show on at the moment. I was doing background work on my article. Did you see Knox there? Yes, I did, when I went in. But he was murdered, apparently, when I was inside. Who would murder him? I mean, poor Nazi. Perhaps he saw something related to the shooting or overheard someone talking about it. Could it have been an accident? Natural causes, like a heart attack. That would be very comforting indeed, except his throat was cut from oh, ear to oh, ear oh. with a razor blade. Oh. Oh. There's a storm brewing. And I've got a feeling it's going to get quite nasty before it's over. No nonsense. It's Christmas Eve. Let's have dinner. Right this way. Let's go, everybody. <coughs> My dear, would you take me in? Unlike the maiden aunt of the family, all sad and lonely. Uh, of course. Mm -hmm. Aggie, my darling, will you take me in? I'm like the bachelor uncle of the family, all full of myself and annoying. She'll hear you. Let's leave the door open so we can hear the music, shall we? Are we still going with it? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> likes the best, and he usually gets it. But not always. <laughs> I had no idea he was this successful. Oh, he surprised us all, really. We started out together. We were roommates in the city. Both as poor as church mice, auditioning for anything that came along. And, and one day, out, out of the blue, he said, I think I'll write a play about Sherlock Holmes. And I said, don't be ridiculous. That'll never work. 
So he writes the play, stars in it, and it runs for 20 years, and here we are. <laughs> I know he admires you tremendously. Does he? Well, 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 if it isn't the heiress of Brooklyn. Hello. You know, I've been thinking about what happened to you. Pretty young actress, no money. Meets eligible young man who's very rich. He falls deeply in love with her, marries her, and promptly dies on the honeymoon. And I think to myself, you must be the luckiest girl in the entire world. <laughs> Doria, she lost her husband, for heaven's sake. Oh, please. Husbands are a dime a dozen. They come and go like ducks around a country pond. <laughs> they waddle around looking self-important. They quack as though someone is actually listening to them, and then, mercifully, they die off and disappear. <laughs> I think I should go now. <clears throat> that was very endearing of you, Doria. Why not just grab an axe and chop her feet off? I'll grow up. The little gold digger hit the jackpot. What more did she want? A trophy? And she got Simon in the bargain. Now, <laughs> let's stop talking about them. Let's talk about me instead. What is it you like most about me? Your shyness. <laughs> <laughs> I like you because you're handsome and stoic. Doesn't all of Gillette's success make you want to scream? Aren't you seething inside with jealousy? No, he's my best friend. Really? You didn't try to shoot him then? Uh, how could I? I was on stage when he got shot. So was everybody who was here this weekend, except dear, innocent Martha. I don't you. <laughs> Why would I want to shoot him? I haven't slept with him yet. <laughs> Stop being stuck and kiss me. I'm a very man. You mean your lips don't work at all anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Ten minutes upstairs, they never miss us. Daria! We never get to spend time together. We could be spending a great deal of time together in there having dinner. You're angry about the review, aren't you? You did call me a side of beef. <laughs> but in a nice way. Oh, Felix, I was just trying to get a laugh. <laughs> I should tell the truth when I write, shouldn't I? Truth and beauty, as the poet Shelley said, it is all we know on earth and all we need to know. Keats. Hmm? It was a poet, Keats. You know, Felix, you're even more attractive when you stand up to me. Uh, I should get back to the others. <laughs> Not yet, Shirley. Oh, Daria! <laughs> Ah. <laughs> Darn it down! <laughs> you know, Felix, there are certain things I know about your past that you might not want bandied about among your loved ones. So it might be in your best interest to be nicer to me, don't you think? A wonderful dinner. Unison, a hostess. Ah, Philostrate, master of the rebels. Oh, thank you. Hear up the Athenian youth to merriment. Awake the pert and nimble spirit of mirth. I shall turn forth melancholy to funerals. Now break out the cards and let's play some bridge. I go for phenicles. Charades. Dancing. Oh, come, come. I've got something planned that's better than all those put together. I'll give you a hint. It involves shimmering images. Oh, witty. Here he goes again. You have a screening room like they do in Hollywood. No, but a good guess. A slideshow? A walk in the moonlight. Uh, clever, but unlikely under the circumstances. Oh, Willie, you are so aggravating. Just tell us what it is. Well, what do you say to a seance? A seance? Oh. <laughs> churchyard yawn, and hell itself breathe out contagion to this world. You mean like holding hands and talking to the dead? We don't say dead. We say passed over. Or we say lunatic head of acting company forces guests through traumatic evening. Uh, are you really a believer? Yes, well, I'm getting to be. <clears throat> Conan Doyle got me started, and he's quite fanatical about it. Don't we need a medium or something? We do indeed. And tonight, we have the best in the business. Daria? I knew it! Yeah. I knew you were up to something! I'm warning you all right now that I take this very seriously. <laughs> When did you start? I've getting... been a medium since I was 15. I was staying in Paris with my aunt and uncle, who were in grief over the loss of their daughter, my cousin Clemence. The family dabbled in these things, and one night they included me in their ceremony. They were trying to contact Clemence and having no luck, when suddenly, without warning, she started speaking through me, through my lips. That must have hurt. It was exhilarating. <laughs> uh, but why have a seance tonight? Who are we? 
contact me. Guesses? Not. You know, not me. But why? Because, dear boy, he must have overheard something in one of the dressing rooms. A plot to kill Gillette, presumably. And if he tells us what he heard or saw or the name of the person who slit his throat, then the mystery is solved. Am I right? Exactly. Does that mean we are all suspects? Not at all. We could say it was the understudy or, or the wardrobe mistress. Oh, well, I am Fanny. Let's go, let's go. I must have a table as our center, our foil. Please bring chairs. Uh, incidentally, you had a call this afternoon from a young woman. She said her name was Tamsin. Oh, no. No, <laughs> no well, she, she was a friend of mine. A girlfriend, actually. She knows I'm married, but she persists in calling. It's crazy. Is she unbalanced? No, I, I don't think so. I hope not. Does Aggie know about it? Yes, and she understands it's not my fault. At least I think she does. I believe we're ready. Excellent. Tell us what to do. All right, now I want each of you to stay exactly where you are and take a deep breath. Good. Now look around and feel the presence of the other persons in this room. Look at your friends, where they're standing, how they look. Very good. <laughs> now, I'm going to lower the lights and I want each of you to take a seat around the table. Anywhere you please. Beginning to feel creepy already. You are creepy already. <laughs> <laughs> the mood in the room is very important. Let the mood relax you. Let it into your bodies. Slowly, deeply. I can get used to this. Does it always work? Are you always successful in reaching someone? No, not at all. Quite the contrary. All we can do is create the proper atmosphere so that someone from the other side will want to join us. We can serve drinks. My contact is a young actress who was murdered by her husband in 1820 in London after a performance of Othello. He thought she was committing adultery with her leading man. Like that, <laughs> now put your hands on the table. <clears throat> Fingers touching. My name is Galthrock, you law! <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help it. Sorry. <laughs> Lorencia, are you there? Lorencia, dear, this is Daria. Could you come and visit us? Lorencia, I think you like this visit because you'll be doing someone a big favor. Oh, God. Shh. Time to stop pulling around. It wasn't me. Is that you, Laurentia? Oh, I think we should put a stop to this. Stop being a baby! I'm telling you this is a bad idea! Would you two be quiet? Laurentia, thank you for coming. I deeply appreciate it. Now, Laurentia, listen carefully. Someone named Knox, stage doorman at the Palace Theater in New York City, was murdered recently, and we're hoping that you can bring him here so we can ask him some questions. <laughs> Are you willing to help us, Laurentia? <laughs> Thank you, my darling. Is there anything you would like us to do? Stop it, Laurentia! Put your hands on the table, keep the connection! Now, is there anything you'd like to say, dear? Laurentia? Are you still there? Hello, Rancho, please. Murder. Murder. Oh, oh, match? Confess or die. What? Simon! I didn't do anything. Confess or die. Stop doing that. I have nothing to confess. Confess or die. Stop it. Please. Oh, no. Simon, make her stop. Match, stop this nonsense. 
Constitution. I don't believe it for a what second. Is that? You should not point out. You should just point out the window. Where? Through there. I think there's something up there. Wow, I see something you moving. See you see what what is that? Why is it going here? Is it the wind? Why can't you see it? Oh my God! Oh my God!
the bad girls, we called them the malicious ones. They pretended they knew things because they were insecure. Insecure? They bullied people who were afraid of them. They spread rumors and lies because they were unpopular. Get out, get out, get out of my sight, you old hag. And just remember, I am going to ruin your son. He will be the laughingstock of the entire profession. Now leave me alone! <sighs> Daria, I just want to say I had nothing to do with the, 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 the travesty. I mean, I joked around, yes, and teased you a little, but you, you can't blame me for that. Oh, stop littering. I know what you're up to. You're scared to death, and you want everyone to think you're just an idiot. But I am just an idiot. Oh, get out. <laughs> Please, Daria, it shouldn't affect anything. Get out! Don't talk, act, don't. Not a word, just listen. As someone who used to be your friend, despite our little mistake, I want you to know that that display of yours was completely uncalled for. And I suggest that you apologize to everyone before something untoward happens. Untoward? Unexpected. Unfortunate. Now take my advice. You may not think that I'm your friend, but I am. Felix? Felix, get down here! Felix! I'm talking to you! I meant to leave this with you, but I took it with me by mistake. Is everyone in this house insane? Hello, I'm 
operator. Get me the police. P O. <laughs> yes, that's right. Thank you. Hello, is this the police? I have to report a murder. Winnie, dear. Mother, stay out of this room. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Mother, please, there's something I don't want you to see. We will hold on a moment. Who are you speaking with? The police, actually. Your mother, listen. Brace yourself. This is going to be very upsetting. But Daria is dead. Yes, I know, dear. What? I killed her. <laughs> Why did you say that? I said, I killed Daria. <laughs> but she was murdered. That was me, I'm afraid. <laughs> I have to get back to you. She's like my own mother, but what are you thinking? I'm not sure. Uh, I suppose we should hide the body somewhere in the house, and then we'll claim that Daria left here right after the seance, and we have no idea at all where she was going. Then when things cool down, we'll get rid of the body. It does make us accessories to murder, you know. Boy, if you don't want to help your dear sweet Martha, who's been oh, my mother... Shut up! We can't let her go to prison. Poor old thing, what's her life been like? She's had to put up with you for most of it. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Getting rid of the evidence. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh. Look at this. <laughs> there are fingerprints all over it. <laughs> you do know you're not really Sherlock Holmes, don't you? Of course I do, Watson. <laughs> Good God, who's that? How should I know? Maybe it's the police to arrest us for murder. Hello, who is it? Good evening. This is the police. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do you speaking, please? This is William Gillette. May I help you? Yes. I want to ask you a few questions. But as long as no we are there, so may I come in, please? Uh... Y yes, of course. I'll be right there. Thank you so much. Good God, what are the police doing here? Uh, I, I just remembered. I called them after I found the body. Oh, great! <laughs> <laughs> well, they might have confessed, and I told them not to come. Oh, that's all good, then. Uh, hello, police. There's just been a murder. But, oops, I think my mother did it, so please don't bother stopping by. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. I'm laughing behind this mask of horror. Now, help me pick up the body so we can hide it. Uh, oh, she's heavier than she looks. Uh, Put your back into it. She must weigh like a thousand pounds. Uh, uh, wow. Is it all right, like 
Where should we put her? How about the closet? Good idea. Hoist her up. I'm trying. I don't think she fits. Let's stand her on in. That should do it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Felix! What are you doing? It's not my fault! Of course it is. You didn't close the door properly. There. I gotta go. Felix! I didn't do anything! It's this lock. It just won't catch. Who built this place? The three little pigs? <laughs> Hello? Uh, yes, no, uh, no, uh, I'm sorry, I'll be right there. Hey, I have an idea. Oh my god, that's perfect. Why didn't we start there? I forgot about it. But it's your house! That. She looks like something out of Eugene O'Neill. You close that door. I'll go hit the inspector. You just push on the handle. Oh, <laughs> will you stop? Welcome, inspector. Please. Stay. Oh no no! Oh. Come on! Come on! Can you tell it? Uh, 
<laughs> there are these two Irishmen, see, and one of them says to the other, says, Begora, what's that dead body doing on me living room floor? <laughs> and the other one says, uh, Begora, because the door to the bar wouldn't close. Mr. <laughs> 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 Gillette, if you don't mind, I'd love to take a look around for a moment. I'd love to jiggle your handles, uh, as it were. Absolutely. Uh, feel free. Why don't you start in the kitchen? It's uh, right through the dining room. Last door on the right. Thanks so much. I'll just be a few minutes. Where did you hide the body? I, that whole thing of yours didn't work properly, and then I had to drag her out, and then closed all by itself. You didn't pull it properly. Of course I pulled it properly. Excuse me. Oh, oh I forgot to ask. Is there anyone else staying here at the moment? Uh, yes, in, indeed. We have Felix's wife, Madge, and also Aggie and Simon, all from the play you saw. Mm. And, of course, my mother, who's very, very old and is asleep upstairs. So if you could avoid disturbing her. Oh, of course. But I would like to speak with the others, if you don't mind. We'll call them down. Thank you. I'll be in the kitchen. Help yourself to any of the leftovers. Oh, thank you. I've played a lot of supporting roles in my time, but this is ridiculous. Mr. Gillette, no, I've been waiting out here. Oh, we'll leave this. Yes, yes, just coming. I'll be right back. And this time, close it with her inside. Oh, what a good idea! That's very helpful! Any aces to the ground from the floor? Yes. Uh, no, four. Four. There's the front door, the French door, the kitchen door, and the door to the study. And where's the study exactly? So right through there. Thank you so much. Order from chaos. Uh, I beg your pardon? Order from chaos. That's what I do. Isn't it comforting? Felix. <laughs> Felix. <laughs> Would you please stop fooling around? <laughs> She's still alive. Don't be ridiculous. She isn't dead yet. Just, just, just check her pulse or something. <laughs> Why don't you take it? I don't want to touch her! <laughs> well? She's dead now. Oh, thank God. I, I mean... Mr. Gillette! Ah. Look, I'm going to go get the others. And don't you ever, ever ask me to help you cover up the murder again! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Gillette, I just had a thought. Do you have any domestic elves staying here tonight? Uh, no, we don't. Our cook left right after serving dinner, and I gave my butler the evening off. It is Christmas Eve, after all. Is it? Oh, of course it is. Merry Christmas. Now, what about visitors? Did any of your neighbors walk in? Perhaps you have some curtains? Get the all that sort of thing? Oh, I used to love visiting the neighbors on Christmas Eve. A bit of song, a bit of woof woof, and by the time we finish, I could hardly stagger. That sounds delightful, but uh, I'm afraid it was just the cast and mother. A quiet evening with a few retiring friends. Holy hell in a handbasket! This is just lovely. Now a policeman wants to talk to me about a murder. Are you the policeman? Police woman, actually. Good. Arrest my husband. I beg your pardon. Arrest him. He's guilty of sin. And of sin, as it happens. The charge is adultery. Man, would you stop? <laughs> well, it's true, isn't it? You stood right here and admitted it in front of everybody. Well, what was I supposed to do? You could have lied like every other husband on the planet. <laughs> Excuse me, but who's the one who pretended to be possessed tonight? Oh, look at me, I'm Madge. I'm pet catatonic, and I'm scaring my husband to death. I did it to solve the mystery, didn't I? It didn't work, now, did it? But it could have. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's Academy Award goes to Madge Geisel for vomiting blood on her fellow guests this week. <laughs> oh! Madge, get back here! You're acting like a lunatic! What's going on with so much shouting? Randy, I thought you were upstairs. I came down to the kitchen first time. Down the back stairs. Uh, Aggie, we had our Inspector Goring. Inspector, something happened. Well, we're not 
certain, but we believe there may have been a murder in his house. Oh no, he was murdered. Well, that's the thing, we're not quite sure. Where's Simon? How he seems to have disappeared on me. That's odd. When did you all see him? I went upstairs earlier this evening. We all did. And Simon gave me some wine and I fell asleep on the bed without even changing. Mm. I didn't realize how tired I was, but I really clocked out. What? It was like I was drugged or something. Anyway, when I woke up, he was gone. Simon, this is William. Whichever room you're in, go to the intercom and press the red button. That will open up the line between us. Simon? Simon, can you hear me? Oh, William, tell me that he's all right. I'm sure he's fine. You saw him just a half hour ago. He shouldn't have left me in the room. What's going on? Is there a problem? Oh, Simon, where have you been? I was in the kitchen getting a snack. How oh, do you do? Inspector Goring, Middlesex County Police Department. Good heavens, is something wrong? There's been a murder. Oh my god! But not in this house. You think? I think I would know if there was a murder in my own house. Where's Madge? What do you mean, where's Madge? She was with you. And then she hopped off and she's not in her room. She's probably in the bathroom. No, I looked and she's not there either. Why is everyone so jumpy all of a sudden? I told you, there's a murderer on the loose. Madge, if you can hear this, would you... The line's dead. What about the phones? Hello? Hello? Operator? <laughs> dead. It's just electricity. Except that Madge is missing. No, oh, this is thrilling. <laughs> and excuse me, but I would happen to know if my wife was missing or not, and she's definitely missing. Who's missing? Oh, thank God. Madge, where have you been? I was in the kitchen getting a snack. You should have told me. That I was hungry. Your kitchen seems to be mm. very popular. Uh, speaking of missing people, by the way, where's Martha? Upstairs asleep. Through all this? Yes, through all this. What about Daria? Who's Daria? Daria Chase, the columnist. She's staying here at this house. Yes, that's right. Well, she's not, actually. No, she left after you all went to bed. In this weather? Well, she was upset, you know, and she simply insisted on walking out for that run. Upset? A little argument. It was nothing. And did all of you see her leave? Not exactly. Well, she did say she was leaving. Wait a second. That's her handbag. She must have forgotten it. <laughs> Women do. She'd never leave without her handbag. That's impossible. It's not impossible. I agree with Mad. Women mm. just don't. Unless she was running from something. Perhaps someone should look in her room. I'll go. Oh, I'll go with you. If I killed Daria, I know where I'd put her. In that hidden room of yours. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I don't have a hidden room, Simon. Oh, you know what I'm talking about? That bird thing Martha showed us. You pulled this lever. No, no, don't, don't do it. <laughs> I don't know what you two are thinking, but there's nothing in it. <laughs> Mr. Bright, Miss Chase has been murdered and I have been lied to. <laughs> Did you dispose of the body as they do in the mysteries? We put her in the greenhouse next to a very beautiful orchid. She'll try to hold it. Well, that's a mess. You're still cross with me, aren't you? You could have told me about the seance and you could have told me about Mr. Bolt. No! Well, whoever he was, the man was murdered last night and you don't even tell me about him? I'm awfully sorry. I was going to say something. Oh, stop it. You were shot two weeks ago, Mr. Gillette. And if only your stock and not, you're rather concerned at the moment. You don't think this is all connected, do you? Well, of course there is. There has to be. We just can't see it yet because we're in the forest. <laughs> we'll need some assistance, but I assume that this telephone is still dead. Hello? Hello? <laughs> And I suppose no one knows where the murder weapon is. All right. 
I would like you all to go into the study and wait for me, and I urge you to keep an eye on each other. No one leaves or call you for questioning one at a time, and believe me, this is not a joke. Good. Now we can get down to business. I fear it's more complicated than I thought at first. They all have motives. What are you talking about? Get in there. Well, surely I'm not a suspect. Well, of course you are. But it's my house. Well, what has that got to do with it? This thing that makes you a bigger suspect. You know the house inside out, and you knew about the hidden room. You know, when you think about it, you're just as much a suspect as I am. I beg your pardon. It happens all the time in murder mysteries. The slightly odd inspector shows up in the middle of the night, alone, and pretends to sort things out. When in fact she's planning to murder somebody for some hideous crime that happened 20 years ago. Oh, nonsense. I don't see a badge. I left it at the office. Now that's a likely story. Oh, you mean a murder and you're accusing me of stories? Hello! Oh, mother, what are you doing here? <laughs> I heard a scream and it woke me up. <laughs> I think it was a scream. It might have been a tea kettle. Mother, back to bed right now. Oh, Thank don't you. be silly. I'm perfectly fine. <laughs> How do you do? Are you a stranger? <laughs> yes, I am, I'm afraid. Oh, that's all right. I like strange men. Sometimes <laughs> 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 they're nice. So nice. Well, I often think so. What are how many sleeping pills did you take? <laughs> they make me sleepy. All right, back to bed. Oh, stop it. How do you do? I'm Mark Gillette. How do you do? Inspector Thorin from the Middlesex County Police Department. Oh no! Oh, I knew it would come to this. I just knew it. So you know about the murder then? Of course I know. How would I not know when I... Mother, don't I'm... say anything. Not a word. Oh, stop it. We knew it would be... come to this and I want to get it over with. It is a far, far better thing I do than I have ever done before. It is a far, it's far better place me. I go. I didn't want Mother to hear this, but I killed Daria Chase. Really? I'm turning myself in. Oh, good God, are you serious? Yes. She threatened to ruin my career, and I couldn't just stand by and let her do it. Inspector, I killed Daria Chase, and he's trying to protect me. Mother, please. The inspector can see you couldn't do it. You were too... You old. Get over here and say that to me and I'll knock you down. Would you, would you both please, please be quiet. Oh, Willie, how could I do such a thing? And I didn't mean to kill her. She just made me so angry. You didn't mean to. I just wanted to make her sick and teach her a lesson. Excuse us. Mother, you must have realized it would kill her. No, I didn't. I thought you can't treat my son like that. I'll make you suffer first. I'll make you sick as a dog. But you stabbed her in the back. What are you talking about? How could I stab anybody? <laughs> you used a knife from the wall, and then you... Oh, my God, you didn't kill her. I didn't. What was that you said a minute ago about getting sick or something? I said I'd make her sick as a dog, the way she threatened you. That's it. What is that supposed to mean? Listen. Willie. Listen. <clears throat> I don't hear a thing. Neither do I. It's the case of the dog and the knight. But I don't hear a dog. Exactly. Mother, quickly, go find Pasha. <laughs> What's wrong with Pasha? She might be ill or she might be... Oh. Hey, quickly, Mother, go find her. Inspector, <laughs> I retract my confession and my mother's. We didn't do it. But I heard a convince. But she didn't mean it, and that's the point. She's as innocent as a newborn lamb, a feeding on the crest of yonder hill. Hello. <laughs> No, I just made that up. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> oh, oh, she's oh. very ill. I should have realized that wicked woman might do such a thing. Do what thing? What are you talking Look, about? Look, it's simple. My mother was angry with Daria for threatening me, and so to teach her lesson, she gave her, what, a cup of tea? Yes. With something in it to <coughs> make her sick. Yes, well, well, not at first. First, I gave her a regular cup. But when she became abusive, I went back and doctored it. With one of the chemicals I left in the kitchen. It said on the <coughs> bottle, if ingested causes violent stomach pains, and I thought, yes, that's just the thing. <laughs> but she didn't drink the tea. She must have thrown her Portia and put it off the floor. <gasps> that, that, that makes sense. But I must get Portia to bed right away. Goodbye. Oh, by the way, a moment ago, when I went like this, and you nodded, 
What did you think I meant? I thought you were cheering me on about the poison. Go, mother, go! Aha, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, we are back in business. Uh, and we have a murderer to catch. We? Now, let's review what we know so far. We know that Daria <laughs> must have been murdered in the 15 minutes after the seance, because that's when I came in and found her. <laughs> that was the murder between 8.45 and 9 p.m. Mr. Gillette, let me remind you that I am in charge of this case, and you are by no means ruled out as a suspect. A, I am not a suspect, and you know it. B, you do need my help, since I know everyone involved. And C, I haven't ruled you out as a suspect. In fact, you seem rather odd to me. So, who do we start with? <laughs> Call Aggie and Simon in, and no funny business. Aggie, Simon, would you step in, please? I'd like to ask you some questions. The inspector will take notes for me. I do not find that even slightly amusing. This is my case, and it shall remain that way. Now, both of you sit down. I want to discuss your relationship with Daria Chase. How did you know her? I only met her this evening. I met her at Killington, the ski resort. And when was this? Uh, just over a year ago. And how did you meet? She recognized me from a play I was in. She'd given me a bad review about a swimsuit. Swimsuit? I wore a swimsuit in a play, and she implied it was too loose. Loose? But how could she tell it? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, I'd never been to Chilton before, and there she was. I think she goes there pretty often as a sort of getaway. And why were you there? He was helping me. Helping? I was on my honeymoon, and my husband Hugo was killed in a skiing accident. Oh, I read about that. He was a big wheel. Oh, my lord, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Uh, after it happened, I called Simon to help me deal with it. And you got there overnight. Right. I borrowed a friend's car and drove about seven hours. Oh, see. And the name of the friend who owns the call, please. Tamsin McGregor. Yes. That was his girlfriend at the time. Oh, see. Simon, you can talk about it. It's fine. She still calls him, apparently. She doesn't want to give him up. I asked her to stop calling. I know that. I even told Mr. Gillette about it. That's right. She called this afternoon and I answered the phone. You sounded upset, I'm afraid. I'm sorry you had to be involved. Uh, not at all. But uh, one thing I don't understand is how she got my telephone number. I guess she looked it up or called the operator. That's not possible. It's unlisted. Well, I don't know. Maybe she got it from my address book. When you were still a couple. Right. But that was, what, almost a year ago. And, and That's right. I moved in this house just three months ago. So there was no phone number a year ago. It didn't exist. Well, I don't know. Maybe she got it from a friend of yours or your agent or something. I mean, she knew I was coming up. I told her that. But I also told her not to call under any circumstances. I begged her. I said, don't call. <laughs> your telephone seems to be working again. Hello? Tamsin. <laughs> Hello? But Tamsin, how did you get this number? Because I need to know. Just tell me. Just calm down. I'm not accusing you of anything. Calm down! Yes, of course I... I I mean, I did at the time, but things change. I'm sorry. Oh God, Aggie, wait! <gasps> Tamsin, I have to go, I'm sorry. Yes, I'll call you back. <clears throat> May I? Aggie, please, let me explain! Come on! The silence between the two professionals spoke volumes. Oh, it's too bad we can't find the murder weapon. It's one of many things I find odd about this case. It could have fingerprints on it, it could be broken in some way, or wiped clean, or better, any one of a number of things. stop babbling about useless details? I need to think. I would hardly <laughs> call the murder weapon a useless detail, Mr. Holmes. It could tell us everything. 
It won't. I've already inspected it. What? It's in the drawer. Good God, why didn't you tell me? Mr. Gillette! Inspector, I have no idea why I didn't tell you, but now you've found it, so would you please be quiet because I'm trying to think. We've got it! We know who did it! What a team we are! Like a Stare and Rogers. Nick and Nora. Sacco and Mendetti. But you know, we could do this professionally. Yeah, we could at it. What are you talking about? We solved the murder. It's all wrapped up. No need to thank us. But you are suspects yourself. Not anymore. We figured it out. You may call the sheriff and clean up this town. What's your guess? It's not a guess at all. Look, let's start with the proposition. Whoever killed Daria is behind everything. All the murders and the attempted murder. Working backwards, that includes Daria, Noggs, you, and Hugo. I thought no, I thought Hugo was an accident. Oh, please. Coincidence? Fair enough. Go on. So who are the suspects? The people in this house, right? Usins. But, but. but it's a process of elimination. First we eliminate Martha. Fair? Well, um, can you really see her killing Hugo? Or hiring someone to shoot her son? Then killing Noggs? With a razor blade? All right, I'll again. Now, what about you? Did you do it? Oh, please. Can't you? Oh, don't be ridiculous. Okay, so we're down to four, four suspects. Let's start with us. Did you do it, darling? No, my love, and you? Not a chance. But those are denials. They can't even wait whatsoever. Except. Except. For Nobs. Good old Nobs. What about him? Nobs was killed last night. We were staying at my sister's house in Linebeck last night. We have ten witnesses. I see it all. I thought you would. What? We're down to Aggie and Simon, and Simon lied. When? He and Daria met at Killington. They both said so. But Daria said she left there before Hugo died. And he said he arrived there after the killing in response to Aggie's call for help. But why should Simon lie about when he arrived at Killington? So he could murder Hugo and get away with it. Bingo. Bingo! But why on earth would he murder Hugo? The money! Don't you see? Simon arrives at Killington on, say, Saturday and plans the murder. But he pretends to arrive on Tuesday so he can play the hero with Aggie. And it works, because later he marries Aggie and, as her husband, gets half the money. And Darja knew all about it because she happened to be at Killington and saw him. So she became a threat to Simon and he had to kill her. Case closed. Wait! Mr. Gillette was shot at the Palace Theatre, as is that for him. Admittedly, Simon could have hired someone, but why shoot you? He was already married to Aggie, oh, it doesn't make sense. I have an idea about that, so do I. So do I. He missed, right? Well, of course he missed. He had Mr. Gillette's arm. Though from that distance, I'd have put a rope through his arm and a ricochet twice around the theater, he made a comeback between his testicles. <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> the man missed entirely. He was shooting at Aggie. He missed, and the bullet hit Willie. The genius! But why on earth was he shooting at Aggie? Tamsin! Tamsin? Simon has a girlfriend. And he's in love with her. Look at it from Simon's point of view. He killed Hugo and married Aggie to get the money. But he's not in love with Aggie, he's in love with Tamsin. Solution? Kill, Kill Aggie. Aggie! And Tamsin as your telephone number because Simon, Simon gave, gave it, it to, to her. her. So, if I may, I'll recap from the beginning just once. Go. Simon is in love with Tamsin and he's friends with Aggie. Then Aggie marries Hugo, who's Richard's priestess. So Simon, who's ambitious... And a sociopath. Mm -hmm. Kills Hugo, marries Aggie, gets the money, and decides to kill Aggie so he and Tamsin can enjoy the loot. So Simon leaves a note making it look like Gillette was the intended victim. But... But Nogs overhears Simon hiring someone to shoot Aggie. And whoever it is, Mrs. Aggie is intended victim and hits our beloved leader here. And meanwhile, Simon kills Nogs because he's heard something. On top of which, Daria knows the truth because of Killington. And... Blackmail Simon. So he stabs her in the back. Well, that's simple enough. It is, actually. It's like Richard III. Ruthless man kills everyone he needs to in order to get what he wants. The rest is detail. Hello, my dears. Oh, mother, how's Portia? She's going to be fine, thank God. Martha, have you seen Simon around? Well, yes, I have, actually. I was in the kitchen, and I saw him outside walking to the boathouse. In this weather, that's ridiculous. A getaway? 
Hold on a Wait a minute. Was Aggie with him? I couldn't see very well, but she might have been. Oh, God. She's still in danger. I wasn't thinking. You don't think he'd do something from here, do you? Oh, who knows what he'd do? He's getting desperate. Let's all run out to French doors and surround them. Wait. Uh, I think we should make lots of noise so he knows we're coming and thinks twice about hurting her. Oh, that's excellent. I now so we begin to describe it. Be careful. Hello. Where is everybody? William? <gasps> you startled me. Sorry. Where have you been? What's the matter with you? Nothing. Do you want to call Tamsin back? Is that it? No, that's not true. Do I? You sounded pretty friendly on the phone just now. I didn't mean to. Oh, Simon, are you still in love with her? Tell me the truth, please. No. You know what? That you're not in love with her. Not telling me the truth. What do you think? <clears throat> <laughs> I'm sorry, I just get so jealous sometimes. I was looking for you and I couldn't find you. What a weekend. I went outside to do something. Can I get you a drink? I'd love one. Have a seat. You'll just take a minute. Nope. Uh, sit over here. You can see outside. Mm -hmm. The light is so beautiful. Oh, I'm so tired. Are you? Oh, ah, oh, my neck. Massage it? Of course. How's that? Heaven. Wouldn't it be wonderful to live in a place like this? You can't afford it, you know. Huh. That's true. But I want this kind of life, like the inspector. I could solve all the local mysteries and put things right again. Oh, I love that sort of tidiness. When all the pieces fit so perfectly together and everything just locks into place, that's when you catch the really bad people. What did the Penny Feathers cat disappear to? She's on the roof. Who dug up Miss Pilbeam's flower bed last night? What's that darn dog again? Uh, why do the wheelers beat their daughter every night? She tries too hard to be perfect. I know you do. We had the perfect plan, didn't we? We did. I married Hugo, I get the money, we kill Hugo, and we get married. Then Johnny had to come along and stick her nose in it out of the blue. She was on you like a shot. Stupid cow! I've always hated her. Do you know she tried to blackmail me? Me. Is that why you killed her? No, it wasn't me. That's the funny thing. I didn't kill her. <laughs> oh, really? And yet, on the other hand, you tried to kill me, didn't you? You hired that man to shoot at me in the theater pit, didn't you? Didn't you? Yes! And you're about to try it again, weren't you? Please, I can't! I think we won, then you chance and you enjoyed my money! No! Why, you're admitting to me. You're still in love with her, aren't you? Admit it or I'll kill you. Yes! <laughs> I'll go around the front. We'll take the lawn. I'll try the house. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs>
think I leave them around loaded, do you? <laughs> no, no, you don't. Oh, my God, God, me. Oh, Mr. Kaiser, will you help me there? My God, Mr. Gillette, you were right. She's a wildcat. <laughs> Stop it, stop it, I hate you. You would have recorded with your stupid machine, I would have gotten away with it. I hate to tell you this, but I didn't turn the machine on. <laughs> 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 why? Why? Oh, how fifty million dollars, why? How getting to act perfectly and dress perfectly and get treated perfectly? <laughs> Except Simon had to go and ruin it for lying womanizing little chick! Oh, what happened? Oh! Mr. Brock, you are under arrest for the attempted murder of Miss Agatha Wheeler, the murder of Rosemary Hugo, and the murder of Miss Dorian Chase. If you would like to make a statement. Now, wait a second, I didn't kill Dorian, she did! Why? Or why would I murder Dorian? Was your alibi? You lying little stupid! Please be quiet, you are both under arrest. And I believe I'll see my name in some of your drawers. Oh, 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 oh,